So today we're going to talk about the 13 mistakes that people that are just starting out with intermittent fasting make and it's going to slow your progress. But first, hi, I'm Greg Whitmore from Taiyi Mountain Wellness. If you're new to my channel, we talk about everything that promotes health and wellness and we focus on what I call Whitmore's Big Five. Nutrition, stress, sleep, exercise, and the decisions we make. So I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my channel, hit that bell notification so you know when I put out a new video. And at the end, if you get value from this, I always appreciate a thumbs up. But for now, let's get into my computer. Okay, here we are inside my computer. Let's get right after it. Talking about the 13 intermittent fasting mistakes that oftentimes beginners make. Uh, but even veterans at intermittent fasting make some of these mistakes and it can slow our progress. And a little tip, if you can stay to the end, I'm going to have a bonus mistake that I think is a huge factor in why our progress might be slowed. Alright, so let's talk about mistake number one. Mistake number one is starting out too fast. And this is probably one of the most common mistakes made, maybe the most common mistake made, especially by beginners. And that's largely because we're eager, we're anxious to get started on our weight loss goals, if that's what it's for, or just becoming uh, uh, healthier. And we get excited when we hear about all the positive benefits that people are enjoying from intermittent fasting, so we get a little impatient and we start a little too fast. And, and just like weight training program, if we haven't worked out for a long time, if we go into that weight room or we start running, and we go too hard too fast, what happens? We get sore, we get frustrated, discouraged, and we quit. And we end up losing everything that we did and lose our goals. Mistake number two, eating too many carbohydrates. So we have what we call the standard American diet, and it is sad. But uh, we've become a high-carb, low-fat society. And that really started back in the 60s and 70s when scientists determined that fat was the culprit for causing obesity, heart disease, and so forth. And so fat really got a bad rap over the years. We know that's not true, but still today, many people believe that we should cut out the fat in our diet and increase the carbohydrates. I taught this wrong for several years, saying that carbohydrates should be 60 to 70 percent of our diet and now I, I know that's wrong one of the problems with carbohydrates obviously is that they're stored as fat the excess carbohydrates now when we take in carbohydrates some of them are used for their an energy source for the activities we're participating in some is stored in the muscles for our use at later time and then our liver stores carbohydrates as well and all that's good but when we take in too many carbohydrates uh, and all our storage tanks are full, the excess is stored as fat. The other problem with carbohydrates is they cause hunger. They actually stimulate uh, the hunger hormones. And of course, uh, years and years of too many carbohydrates, especially sugar, uh, causes insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. All right, mistake number three, too much protein. So, we know protein is important for us, muscle growth, development, repair, and of course carnivore and paleo diets have become really popular lately and those are high in protein and fat. But uh, we need to pay attention to our macros. When I talk about macros, I'm talking about our carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. And we need to have those in really kind of well-balanced ratios depending on what diet you believe in of course the ketogenic diet which we'll talk about in future videos is a higher fat uh, lower carb um, and, and proteins are spelled out there as well proteins actually stimulate that insulin response uh, maybe not as much as carbohydrates but it does stimulate that insulin response and we know insulin is a fat storage hormone all right mistake number four eating unhealthy fat so as i said Back in the 60s and 70s, fat became the culprit. And, and uh, now we know there's a big difference between healthy and unhealthy fat. Unhealthy fat, of course, uh, you know, we often heard about trans fat. Now that's been removed from a lot of our foods. But 
unhealthy fat is very inflammatory and inflammation inflammatory foods are at the root of a lot of the causes of a lot of our diseases too much fat also inhibits some of that fat adaptation that i'll talk about later of all the macros fat causes the least amount of insulin response so that's good but we still need to eat healthy fat the avocados the uh, the eggs the nuts the seeds the uh, grass-fed beef and that sort of thing so we'll talk a lot about the difference between healthy and unhealthy fat in future videos but stay away from the unhealthy fat mistake number five taking in too many calories now this may seem like a no-brainer we've been taught it's almost been ingrained in us to check out nutrition labels and see how many calories we're taking in and even when we're doing intermittent fasting and we've been fasting for 16 hours or 18 hours, then we think during our feeding window we can eat whatever we want and we binge eat and we take in unhealthy foods and those calories really stack up and we end up taking in too many calories. And at the end of the day, it's still a little bit about calories in and calories out. We still have to have somewhat of a calorie deficit uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the week to lose weight. If we take in more calories than we burn up, we're not going to lose weight. We'll gain weight. I try to get beginners to not focus on calories and not necessarily count calories, but, it, but we still don't want to uh, take in too many. Mistake number six, too few calories. Now you may be saying, what? You just said that too many calories is a problem. Now you're saying too few calories is the problem? Well, yeah, when we restrict our calories too much that can doom us in fact that's what's happened uh, most of you've tried different diets and you've tried restricting your calories so much that uh, it's caused that diet to fail why because our body wants to preserve fat so we talk about what causes you to go in the starvation mode well it's restricting calories too much that starvation mode is an evolutionary pr protective uh, process that the body learned uh, with our ancestors when there were periods of famine. Food wasn't available, the body uh, recognized that, so it had to preserve fat to try to get the body through uh, the period of famine. So the body will preserve fat if you restrict calories too much. The other thing the body will do is slow down your metabolism. So while we do want to have some caloric deficit, if you restrict your calories too much, uh, your body will adapt, slow down the metabolism, preserve fat, and you won't see any progress on losing weight. Mistake number seven, not enough water. Now, so many of us are guilty of that. I'd say the majority of Americans uh, are dehydrated. I know I've been guilty of this, and it seems so simple. All we have to do is drink water, but yet so many of us are dehydrated. One of the problems that causes us to lose minerals, minerals are so important in all the vital body processes. Uh, and the other problem with uh, being dehydrated, oftentimes when we're thirsty, we mistake that as hunger and we go to the refrigerator and eat when all we really, really needed to do was drink some water. So I try to start off every morning now, even though I'm not thirsty, I try to start off my day with uh, a good 16 ounces of water. The other thing I like to do is to add some sea salt. Now, sea salt's better for you than regular iodized table salt because sea salt hasn't been stripped of its minerals. So adding some sea salt a little bit to your water can uh, replace some of those lost minerals, especially sodium and potassium. Uh, those electrolytes, they're so important to us. Mistake number eight, not enough exercise. Now, I'll be honest with you, you can lose weight without exercise. If if you're not a person that likes exercising, I get it. Sometimes it can be hard work and painful. And if you go on an intermittent fasting schedule, you probably see some benefits and lose some weight without exercise. That being said, you will never achieve optimum health without exercise. And I hope that's what we're all after, not just losing weight, uh, not just maybe staving off some of our, our mental uh, problems that we may have mental fog or anything like that. I hope we're looking for optimum health and you can never achieve that because exercise is the great elixir in life. Now I'm not talking about having to 
go to that 24 hour fitness or gold gym and, and start a membership. I'm just starting about simple, talking about simple things like walking 30 minutes a day, uh, doing some body weight exercise. I'm a big believer. If you want to reach your goals, you really want to have some resistance exercises built in. And again, I'm not talking about lifting weights and heavy bars. I'm talking about body weight exercises that anyone, whether you're eight years old or 80 year olds can do. And exercise becomes really important later in life for our balance, uh, for our mental clarity, for producing uh, uh, hormones, key hormones such as growth hormone that'll put off, uh, slow down that aging process. So uh, that's a huge mistake. We have to have exercise in our life. The other thing that exercise does, it's so important, it reduces stress. And as I'm gonna talk in a minute, stress is a key factor in disease and aging. Mistake number nine, too stressed out. There's that word right there, stress. And one of the problems is chronic stress in our life. And stress is so inflammatory and it's the root of many diseases. Inflammation is the root of many diseases, especially autoimmune diseases. And remember, there's over 100 autoimmune diseases. I suffer from one myself. So chronic stress is a problem and it produces a lot of cortisol. That cortisol is just trickling through our system and cortisol is the stress hormone and so we we've got to manage our stress what is it also uh, raises our blood sugar which spikes our insulin a little bit and that causes us uh, to eat more uh, and we know that when we're stressed out oftentimes we go in search of our comfort food and we eat more and we lose those benefits of intermittent fasting and we don't see any uh, weight loss mistake number 10 our schedule becomes too rigid. I'm talking about our intermittent fasting schedule. And this is easy to do because we like schedules. Our body likes schedules. And sometimes our work schedule is rigid. So, But one of the problems is sometimes people get on that same intermittent fasting schedule every day. Whether it's 16-8, 18-6, uh, OMAD, whatever it may be. You do that every single day. And I've always said the body is the great adapter. It'll adapt to a routine. And you'll get that set point. So you'll see plateaus a lot of times. And this happens in weight training as well. If you do the same workout day after day, you'll start getting a plateau and stop seeing progress. So I encourage you to uh, use different intermittent fasting schedules. Mix it up from uh, week to week, day to day. Uh, I try to use all of them, including uh, once in a while doing a 48-hour fast. So keep the body guessing. Mistake number 11, breaking a fast with carbs and fat. So this is really common. You know, no matter what schedule we're on, we're going to break our fast. And it's important that we don't immediately celebrate and take in foods that are high in carbs and fat. One thing we have to realize is that during that fast, our body becomes sensitive, insulin sensitive, okay, which isn't a bad thing because we don't want to be insulin resistant. That's that's the beginnings of type 2 diabetes. But our body during a fast becomes sensitive to insulin. So when we do take in carbohydrates, it causes a sharp spike in insulin. What is insulin? Insulin is a fat storage hormone. And so if we have carbs with high insulin and then we have fat in that food as well, uh, the insulin is going to immediately cause that fat uh, to be stored. What's the best way to break a fast? Well, lean protein. I suggest you take in some lean protein. Uh, I just had some, some lean chicken, had a, just a tiny bit of fat in it, but a real lean protein is a great way. Maybe some nuts, uh, almonds is a great way to break a, break a fast as well. But uh, take in that lean protein about an hour before you eat your normal meal. And another good way to break a fast is with that healthy fat. And uh, fat, again, doesn't cause that spike in, in insulin. Uh, give your body a little bit of, of time to uh, decrease its sensitivity to insulin, and then you can eat that normal meal that contains some carbs. So break your fast in healthy ways. Mistake number 12, adding sweeteners. So I know that most of the sweeteners out there, artificial sweeteners, say no calories. It's all over the place in diet sodas and that sort of thing. But we have to remember that there's something called the cephalic effect or cephalic response. And our body 
recognizes, even in artificial sweeteners, that there's a sweet taste coming. And when it uh, recognizes that sweet taste, it expects to have to respond by supplying insulin. So there is an insulin response, even with monk fruit and stevia, although it might be small. So, so I try to tell people, stay away from the artificial sweeteners during your fast. Keep your fasts as clean as you possibly can. Water's the cleanest. Uh, I drink black coffee. Some people, green tea's a good drink as well. But uh, try to not add sweeteners. If you absolutely have to to get through your fast, then, then do so. Because it's better than breaking your fast with food. But keep our fast clean. But if you're having your progress is being slowed, it may be because you're adding a lot of artificial sweeteners. And mistake number 13, feelings of guilt. This is so common. I get comments all the time that uh, they've gotten off their schedule. Uh, they've splurged. They've gone through a weekend uh, of eating too much and they feel guilty. So they want to quit. And I say that's one of the worst things you can do. One of the benefits of intermittent fasting, the beauties is we can have those times of splurging. You know, going to a wedding. Uh, going to a special event. I just celebrated a graduation of my nephews. Okay, a lot of food there. Uh, last fall, my wife and I went on a, a 30th an wedding anniversary to Alaska. I wasn't going to restrict. Uh, I wasn't going to deprive myself of the great seafood and the, and the cuisine and the drinks and the desserts. So I knew I was going to be off my intermittent fasting schedule, but I knew that I could get right back on it after I got uh, got back from my vacation. And in the end, I only gained about four pounds. And I, I got uh, took that off with just a few days of intermittent fasting. So don't let those feelings of guilt destroy your progress. Okay, I said if you stayed to the end, appreciate it. Here's your bonus mistake, and this is so important. We often do intermittent fasting alone. Okay, and that can be a mistake. We wanna try to get some other people with us. But one of the problems is it can be lonely. Now intermittent fasting is becoming more popular, but when I first started, hardly anyone in my social group had heard about it. And so when I told them I was fasting, they thought I was making a mistake. And they said, you're going to go in starvation mode and fasting's not good for you and, and all those things that I taught in nutrition class. So it can be lonely. So uh, there will be those critics out there that don't understand intermittent fasting. Of course, they won't be critics, and my critics kind of changed tunes when they saw that I lost over 30, 35 pounds and was feeling better and was still working out. So you can turn critics around, but there's power in numbers. So uh, if you can get a, a spouse or a significant other to join you, that's great. If you can get another friend to, or, or group to do it, that's great too, that can, that can help you as well. And the other thing that can really help is coaching. So I, I'm a big believer. I learned all about intermittent fasting by myself, and that was a struggle. So uh, I really suggest that you get someone to coach you through it. They can help you with your individual goals because all of us are different, and we have uh, our individual uh, issues that a coach can help you through. And I'll put a link to a descript in the description below about how you can get coaching from me if you'd like that. And I think I can help you uh, uh, increase the progress and help you uh, reach your goals. So there you have it, the 13 mistakes plus a bonus uh, that hopefully you can avoid if, if you see your progress being slowed. So, so again, I appreciate you watching this video. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna put out a lot more content on all things health and wellness, but especially on intermittent fasting and so uh, hit that bell notification so you'll know when I put out a video and if you got some value from this video I always appreciate a thumbs up comments I'll, I always answer all your comments so uh, again appreciate your time uh, anything I can do to help you on your journey in intermittent fasting just let me know check out my coaching uh, if you want some individualized help uh, but until the, until our next video good luck to you and we'll see you next time